Hey guys, welcome to the Mr. Maple Show. We're back with another Thursday 10 at 10. You guys loved it last time, so we're doing it again. We got some big things in the work here at Mr. Maple, and we greatly appreciate your business. Guys, hit that like button. Remember, these trees are getting listed at 10 a.m. today, so you can purchase these today at 10 a.m. That's Thursday, June 22nd of 2023. We're talking about 10 trees. There actually is 20 getting listed, so check your email out for the other 10 trees. It's a surprise 10 at 10 again, guys. I hope you're enjoying this. Uh, we've got some big things in the works, so we, like I said, I definitely appreciate your support here right now, and I, I can't wait to tell you more. We've got some killer stuff here on the table. Uh, this is going to be Thursday's 10 at 10 for June 22nd of 2023, so if you're watching this a year later, they could be slightly bigger, slightly smaller. Let's get into this 10 at 10. Guys, we're going to start out with Hot Blonde. What? That's right, we're bringing you a Hot Blonde on a Thurs Thursday. Thursdays ain't bringing the weak stuff. We got Hot Blonde on the table. You probably know the story. I named this one for my wife. Uh, it is an exceptional heat tolerant, fast growing Acer Oliviarum that uh, is probably a hybrid with Shirasawa and I'm giving it some great qualities to it. I love this one for its bright yellow, pinkish new growth out in the sun. Give this one some heat, it loves it. This one's gonna work zone six through nine. And this is a plant that leaves out later than typical Acer Oliviarum. Gives you some great yellow color out there in the landscape and some excellent fall color of a bright orange red that rivals Osakazuki. An excellent yellow tree for you out there in the landscape that loves the sun. Probably go ahead and say it, likely the best tree we ever named. I don't know, maybe. It'd be hard to beat that one. All right, from a sun-loving plant to a shade-loving plant, we got another rare Acer species here for you guys. We have Acer Lavigatum Hong Long. The name translates as Red Dragon. It's a selection that was wild collected in Taiwan by Mark Wethington of the J.C. Rouseon Arboretum. And it is an amazing plant. We got to evaluate this plant before he put a name on it. And we actually forced him to put a name on it. Right. We, we said, this plant is amazing. Mark need, had this and he said, I don't know if I'm gonna name it guys. And I said, either name it or we're calling it Mark Wethington and we're gonna put it out there. Cause we couldn't believe the colors on this. Purplish bark, blue green older growth, lavender to purple growth in the spring. Definitely give it some shade. You don't wanna put this one in heavy sunlight you can get some blue green colors that are unreal on this plant. I think dappled lights can be perfect for this plant. If you can give it some light coming through or some morning sun, you'll really pick up the bark colors, pick up the new growth colors, but that afternoon protection is key for afternoon shade. Make sure you have afternoon shade on Acer Lavigatum hung on. Now there's some testing still being done on this one. Brian's doing some experiments right now in zone six. We do list this one as a zone seven through nine. So guys, next up, we got Acer Bergerianum Mino Yatsabusa. Boom, another one for you bonsai guys. Mino Yatsabusa, always popular. I love this one. You know, Tim's called it a lace leaf Bergerianum before because you get that stringy growth in there. This one's popular for container gardening or in the ground because of that dense habit. I like to think of it as like a Makawa trident maple. Now, as this tree ages, as Matt and I went and saw J.D. Veritree's place, this tree gets some amazing cork-like uh, features on the bark itself. So Stay get these little knots. JD Veritree's videos. Yeah. And so this is an amazing tree for bonsai. It's got that thinner leaf. It's a trident maple with bronze, new growth, and yellows to oranges in the fall. Mino is an area in Japan, and Yatsubusa means dwarf. And this dwarf just trident maple definitely stands out from the crowd. Guys, go watch our video about creating a Momiji tempura. We did that in Mino, and uh, just a fun place. I didn't see any Mino Yatsubusas along the trail, but it's a cool plant. Uh, I think this is a great one, whether you're going to the conifer garden, the container garden, or in the ground. It's going to give you a lot of interest. Dark reds, typically to oranges in the fall. Most of the time I get a very dark red. Really a showy plant overall. And, uh, you know, you got to have Amino Bet Yatsabusa in your collection. We're four trees in, and this is our first maple that's a palmatum. Oh, man, we've got a good one, though. <laughs> you Leonard Loblum fans, we've got yellow threads on the table. Guys, yellow threads is one of my favorite selections by Talon Buckholz. It's a newer selection that it has some bright, bright yellow colors. Give this tree some sunlight to really peek up the yellow colors on this. But go check out our full video. We actually captured how yellow this tree can actually be at Maplewood Gardens at our parents' home. And this is just an awesome, a mid-size upright Leonard Lovum. Yeah, I, I love this one. That early spring, you can get some highlighter color on it. We've got a full video breakdown of this of a big specimen. If you're giving it early morning sun, you're gonna break, you know, bring up those colors, especially in that spring garden. It's an incredible plant. Pair it with Villa Toronto, Pung Kill, any of your other Leonard Loblums for so much color and texture. Uh, yellow Threads, see where it falls on our Top 50 Cultivars podcast with Talon Buckles. All right, next we've got a variegated ginkgo here. Guys, we got Beijing Gold. And Beijing Gold is just a gold plant for your garden. 
This thing in the early spring can leaf out with some yellow colors and then the green chlorophyll starts to push out that yellow color. That doesn't happen every year, but when it does, it's outstanding. New growth flushes during the summer can often have some streaking white in the new growth and it just gives a unique variegation for a ginkgo tree that's extremely stable. If you've been shopping for, with us for a while, you know we used to do a lot of garden shows. One year I was at Sacred Heart Festival in Augusta, probably the same old tablecloth we've been pulling around for like 15 plus years. At that show, these things were in peak spring color. I literally had people lining up and arguing over the 20 I had. There was a line, it was, every one of them sold when I opened my booth. They were in peak spring color. I like Beijing Gold because it doesn't revert. So you're talking about a ginkgo that's gonna bring high intensity color. Now it can green out sometimes. So certainly there's parts of the season where it look more green than variegated, but it always comes back. Like this is one that doesn't lose that variegation and it's just a killer plant. Now with ginkgos give them lime. They love lime, it allows them to take up the water and nutrients more efficiently. It's not a fertilizer. It just helps the plant have a more alkaline soil to take up the fertilizers and water more efficiently. Guys, next up, we got Acer Palmatum Murasaki Kiyohime. Or as our friends in Alabama say, Murasaki Kiyohime. This is an amazing plant. The early spring color has a purple red border around the edge. This tree has makes more of that bun shape, but it's semi upright when it does it. So it gives a little more upright structure than a Kiyohime. I mean, this is one of my favorite plants. It's extremely heat tolerant, great for bonza. Yeah, put you a couple buns in the garden. These will look amazing. Uh, this tree is always popular for bonsai for obvious reasons. Murasaki Kiyohimi leaves out with an intense purple border. That's really when it's known for that showiest stage. Even right now, we're in June, and this still has a lot of that purple border going on on that new growth flush. I love this plant. It's gonna be one that's gonna show out whether it's in the container garden or the landscape. Another perfect use for these is that patio planter. This is gonna kind of make that little toadstool topper on top of your planter, which makes the perfect shape. And uh, it's such a cool plant to be growing. And another one we can't do enough of here at Mr. Maple, Murasaki Kiyohime. I know when we do those garden shows, you mentioned them earlier, people would fight over the Murasaki Kiyohimes. Oh yeah. They would often be some of our first trees to sell out each and every spring, because in a gallon or a three gallon, as this thing is to leaf out, they just look so amazing that everyone wants to grab one of them and put them in a container. So you know I named Hot Blonde for my wife. Well, I named Hot Tamale for myself. I was looking in the mirror one day, I said, Matt, you're a Hot Tamale, dude. <laughs> Caliente, dude, I'm, I'm loving it. I didn't really name it for myself, but we've got Hot Tamale here on the table, guys. Guys, Hot Tamale, this was a selection that was found by Masayoshi Yano in Japan. The code name originally when this was working name for it was Nakahara Benny B. And after talking with Masayoshi Yano, he said, told us, he said, Guys, that wasn't really a name, that was a code name. Please put a name on it if it's going to the he market. He said, if you plan on putting this in the trade, I, I require you to put a new name on it. And so we already had the Hot Blonde. We turned it into a full Heat Seeker series. As you know, that's a trademark here at Mr. Maple. We've got the Hot Blonde, the Hot Sauce, and the Hot Tamale. Uh, spoiler alert, the Hot Tamale tends to sell out really quick. These are very popular. It is a highly sought after one because that early spring color is a vibrant pink on olive green older growth. And this is an extremely heat tolerant tree. A lot of people down in Texas, this is a go-to plant that is easy to grow. It's extremely heat tolerant being an Acer Olive Rainum. And it gives you some really nice shades of yellows to oranges in the fall. Plus, I mean, hey, I named this tree for me. I mean, I named the <laughs> hot blonde for my wife and the hot tamale for Matt. Guys, next up, we've got Acer Palmatum Lemon Chiffon. Oh, these are great, guys. This is a fun lace leaf. Uh, you know, if you already have a lace leaf in your collection, a lot of people start out and their first Japanese maple they're growing is a lace leaf. Now it may be a red typically, then they, then they branch out, they're like, what are these waterfalls? Lemon chiffon is gonna give you some spectacular colors to pair that off with, because this one in the early spring can definitely have some yellow to lime green hues to it. Guys, this is an introduction by Dick Wolf of Red Maple Nurseries, and he introduced Emperor One, and that's an excellent tree to pair this with. The guy knew what he was doing. He did. Emperor One is a nice red upright that's gonna be extremely heat tolerant. This is a green, that has yellow new growth. So the new growth on this is a bright lemon yellow. And then the fall color gives you some nice yellows in the fall as well. So it complements that Emperor One all throughout the season or blood good if you've got that in your uh, garden. Complements those perfectly, having that green cascading with that yellowish new growth and the yellow fall color. Really a nice pale yellow fall color on this one as well. Smaller overall tree, gonna be lower in habit than your Tamukiyamas. Typically this one's gonna be four to five feet tall with a five to six foot kind of spread to it, even in 15 years, making it very compact and full. Great candidate for container garden. And again, this one's gonna work zones five through nine. In the container garden, you wanna put that one in some protection in the zone five, but excellent plant to be growing. 
All right, guys, no hitters today, huh? Man. Next, we got Acer Palmatum de Sojo. <laughs> de Sojo in the springtime, at least that was a bright red, going to a bronze red, and then to a green, returning in the fall to a bright fire engine red. The spring color and the fall color are very comparable. And because of that, people often get confused with photos when they're looking at a spring color. Is it a spring color or is it a fall color? This tree brings the intensity in the early spring. Another one that tends to sell out pretty quickly for us here. Bonsai guys love this one. I always let our Bonsai fans know these are grafted. You could either Bonsai this tree, you could do some rooted cuttings or air layers from this. It's an excellent plant for Bonsai. You can also just put this out in the ground to use for future stock. That's actually the easiest way to do it. Grow your grafted trees in the ground to create your future bonsai material. That's the optimal ways to do it because grafts are gonna outperform rooted cuttings in the ground. So think about this one as a future for bonsai if you're getting into bonsai because of that small leaf and optimal spring color, it's always highly sought after. You can put this one in the ground if you're a maple collector too. It's got, it is no loss as a full size specimen in the ground. This thing is spectacular with that pink new growth in the spring, really puts on a flower-like display. Pair this with something like Hot Blonde, and you're gonna have dynamic colors in the spring and the fall that really play well off each other, Hot Blonde being more of the yellow and the DeSojo being that bright red. Ooh. And they're both extremely heat tolerant. So what do we have here, Tim? Guys, we've got Acer Palmatum Western Burt Orange. Guys, one of my favorite memories as a maple person is going to Western Burt Arboretum. At some point, I'm gonna to have to do a photography breakdown and just kind of give you guys a little bit of my trip to Weston Burt. I toured Weston Burt with Peter Gregory and Hugh Angus, and it was one of the most magical things I ever did. It was pretty cool. I was walking around, saw Weston Burt red, Weston Burt orange, Weston Burt uh, spreader, and there were just so many amazing plants, and I really fell in love with Weston Burt orange. That color is immaculate. It's a deep orange. It was kind of fun. We're walking around a perfect fall color, and I'm noticing people look at Peter Gregory and then look at the back of their pocket guides because he's the guy that wrote the third and fourth edition of Japanese Maples and they're looking at him, they're looking at the back of the book. He's a little older than when the book was there, but Peter, one of my favorite people, God rest his soul, in Maples, one of the funniest men I've ever met as well. Yeah, Peter was, was a trip. I love Peter to death. And he was the director at Weston Burt for a long time. He was, and Weston Burt is one of the oldest plantings of Japanese Maples in Western culture. And because of that, they've got some old Japanese maples there. One was named Western Burt Orange, one was named Western Burt Red, one was named a Western Burt Spreader. And this is the Western Burt Orange. It's one that's a, a really nice dark green that goes to a nice bold orange in the fall. Uh, it's not often found in the nursery trade. Again, it's gonna sell out pretty quickly today. Definitely not in the US. It's, yeah. it's, it's a fairly rare one for the United States. Guys, exceptional fall color. This one, it can rival Hogyoku's for those oranges. It's consistent. It's more of a Matsumure style leaf style, so it's a little different than typically most of your oranges. Uh, if you're a collector, I definitely recommend Western Burt Orange. Pairs well with anything red. It's gonna pair really well when we get that Western Burt Red back in stock, but today's your chance to pick up Western Burt Orange. Guys, that was 10 of the 20 trees we're listing today. So check your email out. If you're not subscribed to our email, go do that. Guys, we try to put out daily content here on Mr. Maple Show, and We've actually put out a couple extra 10 at 10s recently just because we know y'all have been killing for it and really want some of these cool plants. We're doing our best to get these out as quickly as we can to you. Hey, we love you gals too. We say guys every two seconds on this channel. It's like a jar of jelly beans. You can guess how many times we said guys in the comment section below. We appreciate our international community. You guys are awesome. I can't ship to you, but we really appreciate you being part of the Maple Mafia and subscribing to our channel. So if you haven't already and we earned it, guys, subscribe here on our channel. We're bringing seven days a week of maple related content with walkthroughs, all kinds of incredible stuff. Hopefully we've earned that subscription today from you. So get ready for 10 a.m. Take care. God bless. And have a great day.